Like last year, we had uh, just some murals here on the Jaguar Land Rover building here, and this one behind it. And some of our artists got paint on four hundred thousand dollar Jaguars, and so we end up buying all four of them. So both him and I drive Jaguars now, and we look super good in them. No, actually, we we spent so much money detailing all of them. We spent so much money painting cars. Jasper and I actually grew up together. We, we know each other from high school. Well, he was like a cool kid and I was like a nerd. So we didn't hang out in high school. You know, I was like alone. I was in that one in the cafeteria where like the table where like no one wanted to sit on. You know, I didn't have any friends. Well, he's exaggerating. <laughs> My grandparents are Holocaust survivors. They're uh, Polish Jews. And after surviving the war, they fled uh, Poland into Russia, uh, you know, the smaller countries lead to Latvia, places like that. Born and raised in Honolulu, second generation Chinese. My dad's from Hong Kong and my mom is from Macau. And they went to high school in Canada. When they were there, which is like maybe the 60s, they experienced a lot of racism. They said that they used to get the rocks thrown at them when they were at bus stops and stuff. And so they moved to Hawaii because they thought there were more Asians there and they would feel safer. So that's how they came here. I was born in Israel and I lived there until I was five. And uh, my dad's from Israel, my mom's from Hawaii. They were third generation in Hawaii. Um, and actually, she's a weird mix. She's uh, half Japanese, half Korean. When Pearl Harbor was bombed, it was a, you know, a huge shock to our country and everything. And the first thing my grandfather did was join the army. At first, they, they wouldn't let them fight. And, they, you know, there was a, a lot of racism in the military, but uh, eventually they became the 442nd. They were some of the, the greatest war heroes that our country had um, just because they you know, I think they had something to prove, maybe. Well, a lot of times we just like go door to door and just talk to them and ask them if we can paint on, the, on their walls. Um, sometimes if they're kind of hesitant, we'll say, hey, look, you know, how about you let us paint on it? Give us a chance. And if you don't like it, then we'll paint it over. So it's a win-win. Either you have amazing art on your wall or you have a freshly painted wall. And 100% of the time, like, they love the artwork and it ends up staying. So we just want a chance to sort of show what we can do. And, uh, deal with all these cars parked there. Yeah. Every year it's tough. Parked cars are always a pain. But we try our best to like work with the community where we don't cause too much of an impact. But sometimes it's like they just park there and we're like, oh, we're painting here. And you know, so it's tough. I think also you'd be surprised at what you can accomplish with uh, a smile and please and thank you, you know? Usually people are willing to move their car or do little things. We call it the Aloha Spirit, right? So Aloha is love. Aloha Spirit is just about respect and love. Powwow, the words originally were inspired by comic books. Pow being the impact that art has on the viewers, sort of like a punch in the face, and then wow being the reaction to that. But powwow together is a Native American term about a gathering to celebrate art, music, and culture. And we felt that was exactly what we were trying to do. And powwow um, is about, number one, bringing people together. So flying people from all over the world and having them connect with the local communities and building bridges together and doing art together and becoming friends and a family together. Two, it's about beautifying neighborhoods, you know, making, making places more alive by the simple act of putting paint on walls and, and creating open air galleries. And three, to educate to provide resources for young people that want to do the same, that want to be artists and musicians, and giving them those resources and, and, uh, and teaching them and creating talks and different things. The very first one was in uh, Hong Kong, and I lived there for about four years. 
But then when I was there, I wanted to also continue doing art school because that's what I did when I was living in San Francisco. So I'll take my portfolio around and I kept getting rejected, um, mainly because I was the wrong type of Chinese. I was American Chinese. And so as a reaction to that, I started my own gallery. Found like an old restaurant that was abandoned for 10 years, painted the walls white, put in windows, doors, and it was a gallery. And the very first exhibition we did there was the very first powwow where we brought in about five artists and we just kind of painted together. And we thought that maybe we could also sort of inspire people in the neighborhood to do art if they could see people making art too. After the first one in Hong Kong, it was like, let's bring it back to Hawaii, to my hometown, and then to the first one here, which was like, you know, we had like 12 artists, and we did one wall. And now the last year's one we did like, we had like around like 100 artists doing like 70 murals in a week. So it's grown a lot since then, um, and all over the world. A lot of Kakao is changing. There's these, all these new high rises are going up right as we speak. This is kind of like the last little oasis of old Kakako left here. It's a double edged sword because, yes, there's you know more businesses being brought into the community, it's safer at night, there's more people around, you know, there's life and color in the community. You know, the walls when you look around, it's beautiful, there's murals everywhere, but. The other end of, you know, what happens eventually is, you know, a lot of the people that help you create that kind of community slowly get pushed out by big developers. So it's the the ongoing dilemma of every community: growth, change, how that change is taken. Whenever you build a brand, and I feel like you know Jasper is definitely our brand guru. It has to be done at the highest level. As it grows, it's going to change, but you have to just keep an eye out for value. And okay, we're growing and more people are flying in who would find value in that. The Hawaii Tourism Authority, they would find value in that. Maybe they can help and be a part of it, you know? We're getting more exposure uh, painting murals. Who would find value in that? Montana cans, because they want people to see artists using their cans. What is the value to the artist, you know? We're giving you exposure, we're giving you an experience, you know? If you don't have that value, um, then it's gonna be hard to convince people. I mean, one advice that I would give is just to, you know, take those risks. Okay, yeah, maybe now you have to have like a day job and everything, but you know, you have a lot of free time, like in the, in the evenings, on weekends, like create personal projects. You know, like make a book make a movie on your own and then and these days it's even easier you know where you can find ways to fund it where you can find ways to promote it and get it out there the DIY mentality I think is important you do have to take that first step and that first step was Jasper doing his own gallery in, in Hong Kong that was really brave and then when he came to Hawaii he, he put the first power on his, on his credit card you know my family housed all the artists in our house and then and Jasper paid for most of the expenses on his credit card. You know, that's not a sustainable model, but sometimes the first step, you have to just kind of just jump off the cliff. NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.